I launched my first portfolio website in 2019 by using a template in Adobe Portfolio. Since then, I stuck with the same template and then tweak it from time to time. Last year, I decided to quit my full-time job in design, then travel across Southeast Asia with a mindset that I'll never go back to design. But I'm back. <laughs> Ironically, after six months, I realized that I still love design. And now that I'm back, I told myself, this is the perfect time to redesign, reinvent, rethink, revolutionize my portfolio website. And with that, let's get started. We are now in the last episode of this series. So today I'll be showing you the end-to-end -end process of how I launched my portfolio website. I will divide this video into three parts. First we have is the ideation, and this includes the strategy and the thinking I have behind creating this portfolio. Second, we have design, where I will show you the wireframes I have in Figma. And then last, we'll be building the website on Webflow. So before starting this project, I asked myself a few questions. So this includes who am I as a designer and what changed since I quit my job? While traveling, I continued working on freelancing and volunteering roles. And I noticed that the ones I enjoyed the most are related to UI UX design, web design, and branding. So on my portfolio website, I want to show my most recent work that truly reflects who I am as a designer today. During this phase, I also started looking for words on how I would describe the look of the site and what I want people to feel when exploring the site. I also find that these words are a great way to represent myself. I want my portfolio to show a quiet confidence when it comes to my work. Basically, I want my design to do the talking for me. So less words and more focus on the actual designs. To gain more inspiration, I look at other portfolios who are doing the same project as mine just to see what they're doing and see what I can integrate into my portfolio. And based on that, I started thinking of my sitemap and realized that most portfolio websites have the same structure. We have a homepage, about, projects, contact. Homepage, about, projects, contact. I decided to follow the same format just to keep things simple and less complicated for me to build myself. With the sitemap in mind, I began sketching my wireframes and I included all the usual sections of a portfolio website. I have a header, an about, featured work, services, and a contact section. With a plan in place, I opened Figma to continue designing the Mint Fidelity wireframes for both the desktop and mobile versions. I've already started working on my visual design or branding when I'm doing the thumbnails for my YouTube videos. So I'd like the designs on my thumbnails to be cohesive with my website. Most of the colors I'm gonna use are gonna be neutral colors, so black and white, just to make the design stand out. And then I'm gonna add a touch of purple for the visual contrast. And as for the font, I was looking for a bold and playful sans serif typeface. That's why I chose owners. Before I continue designing the high fidelity wireframes in Figma, I created a basic style guide first. This will make things easier for me when I'm working on the pages. I'm planning to use this all throughout my website, so this will make it easier for me to make all the pages look like they all came from the same website. So for this project, I only needed the basics, so I have a type scale and a color palette. When I'm designing websites and apps for developers, I try my best to communicate my designs properly on Figma. So this includes like having the perfect structure of the pages or the component. Because as a designer, this is my way of communicating to the developers before I finally hand them off for development. But this time, I'll be building it myself. <laughs> so if I were to do this again, I'm gonna consider Figma as a basic structure instead of the actual final designs. Because since I'll be designing and developing it myself, I have time to perfect it on Webflow. So I think I would have saved a lot of time if I didn't pressure myself to perfect everything on Figma. At this stage, all I needed to know is how I wanted to structure the content and create templates that I can follow on the different pages of my website. For example, how I want to show the images and text inside a content page. And another example here is for the case studies. You'll notice that the layout is very similar. But as you can see here, the images are not finalized. And you could see I didn't finalize the layouts here as well because I have a few here. If you're interested in how I tackled my case studies, I have another video where I go through my full process here. As you can see here, I have my designs laid out. 
But when you look at the actual website, there's still some difference. And once I got to a point where I'm satisfied with my wireframes, I was ready to build the site on Webflow. On most of the projects that I've been a part of, I only handle the UI UX design and then hand out the designs to a developer for development. So it was a bit intimidating for me to start a full website all by myself. I decided to take it slow and my goal at first is to be comfortable with Webflow. So I started with an MVP landing page. So the about, work, and contact pages will all just be condensed into one single page, which is the landing page. It was a struggle at first, and if you're interested about that journey, I have another video in this series that talks about that process. Overall, it was a success, and I managed to build a landing page that is both responsive and very close to the designs I have in Figma. But if I were to start this again, I first created my style guide in Webflow before messing around with the structure of the pages. This helped me to become more organized instead of having a long list of header styles. When I had my style guide in place, I find myself copy and pasting headers most of the time. This way, I got to focus more on building the actual layout of the page. I went a step further and created components like the navigation bars and cards. Then it would just be easy to drag and drop it whenever I need it. And with this mindset, the rest of the pages were easier to build. <laughs> After a few hours, days, weeks of designing my portfolio, I'm happy to share with you my newly launched portfolio website. Oh, we can run